Hey there. So uh, I thought I'd take a minute and look at two ways to kind of differentiate instruction uh, if for any assignment, really. Um, but largely uh, doing this as a way to let students uh, play to their strengths in learning, uh, identify some ways that they might improve in other areas, and also give them uh, more of a sense of um, ability to choose their own destiny in relationship to some of the assignments. So uh, this first example here, uh, any, again, it could be a written assignment, a presentation type assignment, it could be a demonstration of something. But the idea here is that you set up several different assignments that utilize um, different mediums of expression. So uh, one might be video, one might be uh, audio or a photograph and some text, uh, or it could just be simply text. Um, so here you would create the criteria for each of those expressions of the work. Um, additionally, you can allow them to uh, maybe work in groups or do more than one of the items. So instead of just writing one, you know, two-page paper, they could write a two-page paper and do a, like a podcast, right? So, um, and again, these are just examples, but here you can see that in this particular assignment, uh, they are allowed to do a video. Uh, it needs to be three minutes long. Here's a couple links to some tools that might work. Um, they could create some kind of a website uh, presence uh, or create an audio clip. And again, these the, the details would need to be fleshed out a bit more, um, but ideally, the, the assignment and the amount of effort or work that needs to be put into each type of version of the assignment would be equivalent, right? So you're not asking them to do a 30-second podcast and write a 14-page paper. Uh, those two are not really equal. Um, additionally, uh, maybe letting them work in teams, uh, but kind of uh, amp up the... Um, the requirements a little bit, right? So uh, it just gives them more flexibility as a way to, under, to, to demonstrate their understanding of a particular topic. So these are kind of about the, the medium itself, right? There's different ways to express it. Another option might be to simply change point values, right? So um, when a student goes into the, you know, the end of the chapter assignment or whatever it is, um, they're given not just one option for one type of paper, but they are given sort of the, the low ball or sort of the C grade length or quality. Uh, and then maybe to demonstrate their understanding further, they're asked to um, do some more factual recall, right? So in this case, you know, they could get one point or X amount of points for sort of doing the, the least amount of work. Uh, if they want more points, they could do that same amount of work and then, say, take a quiz. Uh, and you can see kind of uh, moving that up further so that they're demonstrating a deeper understanding as the points go up. Um, I, I think that, you know, again, this is just as an example. Um, and how many questions there are in a quiz is, is not really all that relevant, but um, it just allows the students to kind of see, aha, here's what I need to do to do the, the basic level of this assignment, and here are some other options um, that I can do to uh, even more deeply express my understanding or demonstrate my understanding. Um, this is not kind of unlike, I guess, a rubric, right, where you can, um, get the kind of the passing grade in the in the center maybe of the rubric all the way down and then uh, the criteria milestones vary uh, throughout the um, the various criteria in the rubric so anyway two examples of uh, sort of different ways to vary up the uh, assignments and obviously in all of these cases how you grade how that looks in a canvas grade book for example is definitely uh, more challenging, right? Um, it's not as simple as uh, you know a self-graded 
true-false test. So there you go, a few examples of options.